hello students today we are going to discuss uh, the topic osteoarthritis which already we have discussed in the class so let us just revise this topic with this presentation it is the most uh, common chronic condition of the joints it can affect any joints but uh, occurs most often in the knees hips lower back neck small joints of the fingers sometimes and the bases of the thumb also the big toe so what happens actually if you remember the hyaline cartilage in the articular cartilage provides a smooth gliding surface for the joint motion and it also acts as a cushion between the bones so in this degenerative changes which is known as osteoarthritis or wear and tear the cartilage in due course of time with age or sometimes due to other mechanical factors it breaks down it starts to break down causing pain swelling and problems in moving the joint so as the osteoarthritis worsens over time the bones may break down and develop growths called the spurs and these bits of bone or cartilage may flake off float around in the joint so in the body an inflammatory process occurs and the cytokines and the enzymes develop that further damage the cartilage so in the final stages when the condition has become severe the cartilage wears away and the bone rubs against the bone leading to joint damage and more pain so as i said it's from wear and tear that is the mechanical uh, loading of wear and tear and the normal cartilage uh, lining is gradually worn away and the underlying bone is exposed as you can see in the picture here there are patches which the cartilages are torn or worn out like which are called the aberration Now the repair mechanisms of the tissue absorption and the synthesis get out of balance actually here, and this results in the new bone formation called the bone spurs and the bone cysts. So here you can see the once the uh, uh, osteophytes, once the uh, articular cartilage is, is worn out and the subcondral bone is exposed. After that. there will be this new bone formation initiation and these new bones are actually spikes or irregular this called as the bone spurs or the osteophytes which when rubs against each other will cause more pain it is the most common form of arthritis and is the most common joint disease as a physios when we will be in the clinical practice we will mostly come across lot uh, 70 to 80 percent of patients of uh, suffering from hip or knee pain because of osteoarthritis and most of the people who have an OA older than are older than age 45 and women are more commonly affected than men it also uh, often occurs at the ends of the fingers thumbs and lower back but knees and hips are the most common ones here you can again see this is the exposed bone inside this is the eroding cartilage these are already the bone spurs forming and this is also the eroding meniscus sometimes it is also seen in the proximal interphalangeal joints known as the habardens nodes and the bocards nodes respectively the weak factors is i said you it is the age strongest risk factor and it can also start in young adulthood if you are over 45 years old you are at higher risk more in females than men men and the, the joint alignment people with joints that move or fit together incorrectly such as the bow legs or the dislocated hip the hip or double joint tenderness joints are more likely to develop away in those joints where the biomechanical alterations or the normal alignment is not in uh, proper 
alignment for example we have seen many cases in the knee joint like if there is a uh, you know varus or the valgus all these varus and valgus stress or the coxa vera coxa valga all these are uh, uh, not in the no normal anatomical alignment so ultimately they will lead to the uh, um, extra loading in some places and uh, offloading in some places that is some areas will be on uh, higher loading ultimately resulting to this osteoarthritis heredity also is one of the factor joint injury or overuse like secondary and old injury or an overuse in sports a traumatic injury that is the ligament or meniscus tears uh, that may be a risk for developing away subsequently then obesity one of the biggest factor lifestyle disease lot of junk food sedentary lifestyle overweight obese ultimately it will load on the hips and the knees symptoms uh, it uh, occurs slowly it may be like many years before the damage to the joint becomes noticeable so the radiographic evidence is very much important and uh, sometimes it is overlooked and by the time we, uh, we diagnose in the x-ray already the damage has been done so there will be steady or intermittent pain stiffness swelling or tenderness crunching feeling or bone rubbing on one another like which is called the crepitus click sounds and the joint is used the pain it is a mechanical type of pain which is generated by mobilization it increases with fatigue and decreases with rest and the pain occurs in the morning or after a period of inactivity So pain is usually a mechanical type of pain which is generated by mobilization increases with the fatigue and decreases with the rest the pain occurs in the morning or after a period of inactivity there will be loss of range of motion and it will be progressive and this limitation is mainly related to the blocking of the voluntary muscle functioning and the reflex contracture that is the muscle spasm it also result of the changes in the articular spaces with incongruent joint surfaces also as i said there is the capital sounds which you can hear the cracking scraping and they are generated by mobilization of the joint irregularities in the articulating joint surfaces and poor quality of remaining cartilage is very likely to be the cause so there there will be certainly some changes in the articular cartilage and it results in tissue swelling in color in fibrillation there will be cartilage fibrillation cartilage erosion down to the subchondral bone so here you can see some of the pictures of the cart uh, cartilage changes another picture of the changes in the connective tissue of the articular cartilage the normal articular cartilage from 21 year old adults here is a picture and in the diagram b here down it is the osteoarthritic cartilage changes the surface changes after the disruption of biomechanical forces further triggering active changes by the tissue so you can see the difference in the both the pictures uh, after the osteoarthritic changes how it looks like the cartilage damage causes chondrocyte cloning in an attempt to restore articular surface so normal adult chondrocytes are fully differentiated and do not proliferate so here this is the normal articular cartilage and here this is the osteoarthritic changes cartilage unfortunately the new dividing cells do not differentiate fully and cannot effectively synthesize the elements needed for the matrix maintenance this results in a net, uh, net loss of the matrix components so the collagen content stays constant but the fibrils are thinner and more disorganized there will be definitely decreased tensile strength the proteoglycan loss results in inability to hold on the water content as the degenerative changes occur and the decrease resistance to compression especially with repeated stress 
this is the flow chart you see the pg collagen damage pg loss then the mixed charge density swelling pressure frictional drag hydraulic permeability increase matrix deformation increase fluid flow and to diminish the cartilage load bearing properties the load bearing properties will be reduced the main differences between osteoarthritis and aging in aging it is a normal metabolism normal enzymatic remodeling takes place cartilage changes only no mitosis no change normal rate synthesis collagen and proteoglycan will be normal no ebonization osteophytes only with excessive use increase collagen x link and here you can see there will be enzymatic destruction of the heart tissue remodeling control site mitosis intense increase synthesis collagen and proteoglycan increase water content cartilage fibrillation and ebonization i would like shiny surfaces subcontral then the bony spurs and the pigment will be here no pigment but here in the aging there will be pigmentation so these are the overall changes in the osteoarthritic condition and the x ray you can see there is distinct loss of joint space so again here you can see the changes in the articular cartilages and the bony spurs and the joint space is diminished joint space narrowing periarticular sclerosis osteophytes subcondral bone cysts here according to the radiological features or the x ray kelgrin classified uh, this grades that is the degree 1 normal joint with a minimal osteophyte this is the uh, grade 1 degree 2 is the osteophytes on two points with minimal subcondral sclerosis proper joint space and no deformity in grade 3 There will be moderate osteophytosis, early deformity of the bone endings, and a joint space which narrows here. Grade four, large osteophytes, irregular margins, deformity of the bone endings, narrowing joint space, sclerosis, and cysts. So you can see the distinctive features, different features in the grades one, two, three, and four, and the normal for this is the acute one. then uh, if you see an arthroscopic diagnosis the arthroscopy allows earlier diagnosis by demonstrating the more subtle cartilage changes that are not visible on x ray so you can see here this is the normal articular cartilage and how the degenerated cartilage looks like with the exposed subcondral bone this cartilage is torn here and this arrow marks here is the subcondral bone exposed In addition to being the most accurate way of determining how advanced the osteoarthritis is, arthroscopy also allows the surgeon to debride the knee joint. The debridement essentially consists of cleaning out the joint of all the debris and the loose fragments. During the debridement, any loose fragments of cartilage are removed and the knee is washed with saline solution. The areas of the knee joint which are badly worn may be roughened. with a burr to promote the growth of new cartilage a fibro cartilage material that is similar to the scar tissue and this debridement of the knee using the arthroscopy is not 100% successful but if successful it usually affords temporary relief of symptoms for somewhere up to 6 months to 2 years you can see so the arthroscopy also allows the access of surgical treatment of articular cartilage graft transplantation micro fracture techniques and subcondral drilling a uh, few of the scales we can have a look here the outcome measures like the hip disability and osteoarthritis outcome score knee injury and oa outcome score the western ontario mcmaster university osteoarthritis index these are all emphasizing the pain component intermittent constant osteoarthritis pain index west have year multi dimensional pain inventory and so on mcgill pain 
question in a short form, knee injury and uh, uh, OA outcome score. And here are some of these scales, outcome measures are based on the activities of daily living. Like the Canadian Occupational Performance Measure, Medical Outcome Study, short form 36. The short form 36 is a generic patient reported outcome measure and aimed at quantifying the health status, often used as a measure of health related quality of life. WHO quality of life brief. It assesses the quality of life within the context of an individual's culture, value systems, personal goals, standards, and concerns. Community integration questionnaire and the physical activity scale for the elderly. The key assessment of participation, knee injury, and OA outcome score. So these are the some of the scales, the measurements, outcome measurements, where we look at the uh, the pain component and some scales will look at the interference in the activities of daily living so we can uh, from this questionnaires we can take a, a measurement of how the uh, debilitating the condition is or how the patient is uh, responding to this condition uh, if the condition is uh, deteriorating or what is the current status Management, uh, it cannot be cured, but we can arrest the symptoms or we can prevent from further deterioration. And as a physios, we are uh, we have a very important role in the awareness, in the patient education, in do's and don'ts, and in the rehab. So the functional treatment uh, goals are the pain reduce, reduction increase the range of motion and increase the muscle strength and the oh, uh, walking aids to shock absorption realignment for orthotics the brace limit strain to affected areas medications uh, generally are the paracetamol for the pain and the uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs low doses uh, then bulozetine works in the CNS to inhibit pain, the opioids, the tramadol, the intra-articular injections, corticosteroids, when the patients are having flare-ups and is not responding to paracetamol and NSAIDs, we can go for the intra-articular injections. Platelet-rich plasma, hyaluronic acid uh, injections, where is uh, research is going on and still we lack some evidence for effectiveness in the management of OA. Then you have some uh, these modifying osteoarthritic drugs and number of stem cell treatments also but still research is going on uh, surgery processes sometimes we go for the osteotomy uh, usually affects the inside the half the middle compartment of the knee more often than the outside and this can lead to the extremity becoming slightly bow-legged or in medical terms the genoveral deformity and also proximal tibial osteotomy the result is that the weight bearing line of the lower extremity moves more medially towards the medial compartment of the knee the end result is that there is more pressure on the medial joint surface which leads to more pain and faster degeneration some cases realigning the angles in the lower extremity can result in shifting the weight bearing line to the lateral compartment of the knee this presumably places the majority of weight bearing force into a healthier compartment, resulting in to reduce the pain and delay the progression of the degenerations of the middle compartment. And then the, in this procedure, uh, to realign the angles, a wedge of the bone is removed from the lateral side of the upper tibia. Here you can see the upper tibia, a lateral side uh, a wedge type shaped part is removed and the plate and screws are used to hold the bone until it heals this converts the extremity from being bow leg to not knee so the proximal tibial osteotomy by some time before ultimately needing to perform a, a total knee replacement the operation probably lasts for five to seven years if it is successful and in the most severe advanced cases we have to go for a total knee replacement and uh, usually only considered in people over the age of 60 it lasts about 12 years in elderly population not recommended in younger patients because younger patients more likely the artificial joint will fail replacing the knee the second and third time is much harder and much less likely to succeed younger patients are more active and place more stress on the artificial joint 
lead to loosening and failure early. Younger patients are also more likely to outlive their artificial joint and will most surely require revision. So, here briefly you can see the pictures of uh, a damaged OA knee and the replaced artificial joint, the components of the femoral and the tibial components. This is the femoral component, plastic spacer, and the tibial component, patella button. So the whole joint is replaced. This is the femur, the patella, and preparing the femur tibia. Then replacing the tibial component, the plastic spacer. Then the patella and ultimately this is the artificial joint which is the a anterior posterior view and this is the lateral view photographs of total knee components of a model bone this is the x-ray ap and side view So, unicompartmental when only one part of the knee joint is arthritic, it may be possible to replace thus that part only, maybe femur or the tibial. The procedure is similar to a total knee replacement, but only one side of the joint is resurfaced. The metal component is fit onto the femur, plastic bearing inserted either directly onto the tibia or onto a metal tray which has to be fit onto the tibia. The recovery time is generally slightly shorter following this kind of surgery. So, the OA causes uh, muscle reduced muscle strength particularly in those muscles around the affected joint decreased flexibility weight gain limitation in the ability to do ADL activities of any compromised mobility so the increased physical and psychological function and an increased feeling of well-being are the main goals of an integrated uh, rehab or the physio exercise program so increased joint motion enhancing muscle strength increased aerobic capacity and optimal body weight are the immediate objectives also very important to say is the fall prevention strategies which play an important role in the older clients because people with OA are most prone to falls and studies have found that the OA suffers compared to non uh, have 30% increase in falls and have a 20% greater risk of fractures. So the people with OA have risk factors such as decreased function, muscle weakness, impaired balance. And the, so, as a physio, it is very much important for us to uh, examine the affected the joint and the surrounding structures which are affected because of the joint pain and the reduced mobility. Definitely, the muscles will go for uh, spasm and uh, disuse atrophy. So, we have to concentrate on that to uh, to maintain the mobility and to, to regain or to keep the muscle strength we have to concentrate on the isometrics the closed chain exercises and also we have to take care that uh, uh, while prescribing or uh, designing the rehab program we should not stress much on the joint which is already damaged uh, so the isometrics plays or works far better and the uh, open chain exercises Close chain exercises and uh, also some kind of uh, 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 electrotherapy treatments for the pain modalities like the short wave, the sort of diatomy, and uh, sometimes also we use the uh, muscle stimulation to give strength to the surrounding musculature and. Uh, Yes, for those patients who have already uh, replaced knee joint with the metal implants, definitely we cannot go for the electrotherapy modalities. So this is in brief about the osteoarthritis and the changes that takes place and the factors responsible for it. Hope this video will help you to uh, understand in a simpler way and any doubts we, are, we can discuss. So thank you for watching this video.